first of all, we have to go through all of the risk disclosures. Um, everything I say, uh, you have to take as simply for education purposes. Uh, hey, Casey. Um, anything I talk about uh, as it relates directly to trading or performance of our trades, you have to assume that you will not get those results. So these are all the same closure statements that you've seen in other events. So basically don't trade with money that you can't afford to lose. Okay. So what do you consider yourself uh, as you're approaching day trading right now? Do you consider yourself to be doing the things that you think professional day traders do? Or are you approaching day trading like a hobbyist? Now, you have that decision to make. You can decide between the two. All right? And I'm going to show you how you decide, okay, and how you figure out which one it is that you are. And I'm not saying that one is right or wrong. What I'm saying is you just need to adjust your expectations based on whichever one it is you want to be. I mean, there's nothing wrong with hobbies, right? So how do you approach trading? Hobbyist or trader? You, like I said, this is totally up to you. You get to decide. All right, so about me real quick. I was, for seven years, like I said, a trading hobbyist. And I'm going to go through some things that will help to define a hobbyist and help you decide. At the time, I didn't know I was a hobbyist. This is only in hindsight that I realized that's, that's the way I was approaching trading. Been a professional day trader since 2008. Uh, I kind of redefined the whole approach to being a trader. And then other people that I knew, friends, they started seeing what I was doing and that I had gotten a lot better and they wanted to know what I was doing. So I started teaching them, developing indicators to help them do what I was doing. And, and that's how this whole thing started. Uh, I had no intention of doing this, even though we're called the intentional trader. This was not my intention, but it just seemed to kind of take off. And uh, I'm eager to share with you what it was that I did to help turn things around for me and what has been able to turn things around for other people. So I don't know if you, if this looks maybe looks familiar to you. I would, I would have my, I used to have like 12 monitors and I would sit back and <laughs> did you really? My wife says that. Um, <laughs> she gave you a thumbs up. Um, so I would look at all this information that I have. And I would sit back and I go, man, look at this stuff. This is fascinating. Every tick that comes in, every wave uh, on a, a line uh, or a histogram or um, an oscillator, or that, I found it all fascinating because we were extracting data from the from the markets and we were able to visualize that data and it became quite fun and quite fascinating however i realized at some point that even with all this data all of this information I really wasn't any better than I was when I first started trading, okay? I knew a lot more. I mean, I, I went out to collect information. We were talking about this in the trade room today. We all have a, a feeling that it take, makes total sense. It's a conventional wisdom that more information is good, right? You can't have too much information. You can't have too much data, right? So we have more information. We're collecting data. It's interesting. It's fascinating. We start to believe that we've 
that we then have knowledge because we've collected information and data. And so we believe we have knowledge. So we then believe that, hey, I, if I have all this knowledge, I have the power to influence the outcome of my trades. Okay. And then ultimately that leads to mastery. Okay. So how do we do this? How do we get all this stuff? Well, we're going to go read Trading in the Zone, right? Anybody not read Trading in the Zone? The Bible of, of day traders seems to be Trading in the Zone by Mark Douglas. Everybody's read it. Everybody thinks it's wonderful. And yet, we still have so many people that can't manage to be consistently successful traders. So we're going to go out. This is what we do. Read books, books after books after books about day trading. And we're going to, then we're going to sit and watch videos. Yeah, exactly. We're going to watch videos. And, and we're going to attend webinars. And we're going to go to trading forums where we're going to ask questions. And we're going to consult with professionals, right? Because... That's obviously where professionals hang out is on trading forums, right? We, we seem to want to believe that. Anybody that knows more than we do and is ready to impart information to us, we're, we're all about it. Let's soak it up. Let's, let's then start finding every indicator free, uh, indicator that we can find and start putting it on charts. More tools, more stuff. Fascinating. Right? But at some point, it all becomes the same thing to us. Okay? We, we tend to just mash it all together. Information, data, knowledge, mastery, power to influence, all that. So we got two different kinds of people that are struggling with trading that that really want to potentially turn this into a profitable career or at the very least generate some good extra income okay so because we've mashed all this together person number one really wants to cram in as much stuff as fast as he can because he's ready to be rich. He's ready to quit working for the man, and he's, he knows that all he needs is the secret. And then he can be rich, rich, rich. Okay? So that's, that's trader number one. Trader number two is a person who's fascinated and, in, uh, and really interested in day trading. Right, so every time we gather information, we find that very interesting, which is fun. I, I, I like watching the, the History Channel because that's information that's fun to learn or, or data that's fascinating to see how much data can be extracted from the markets and then manipulated so that potentially that data tells us about something that might happen later. Okay, so then we expect that this information and data is now going to be knowledge because we've collected it, we, we have it, but it's not worth anything until it's knowledge. So we just assume that because we've got this information, we now have more knowledge about day trading and therefore our odds at getting better at day trading are much better. Or you just watched a webinar where the guy was, man, was he compelling. He pulled up a bunch of, bunch of historic charts, and he started pointing at them and said, I took a trade here, and it won. And look, I took a trade here, and it won. And under these conditions, I took a trade here, and it won. And you start going, oh, man, 
that was the best webinar. I'm going to win every trade now. Right? And then and then mastery, you you you're so eager and so ready because maybe you've had some mild successes. You're starting to think, well, how am I going to how am I going to turn this into a, my livelihood so I don't have to go to work anymore? So this is all very typical. This is the conventional wisdom of most traders. And since I've been doing this, giving webinars, talking to people, teaching people since 2009, you might imagine I've met a lot of people. I've met a lot of struggling day traders. So I know that most of you, in some form or fashion, fit into one of these two categories, one of these two types of traders, most of you. I'm not going to say all of you do, but you guys are also here watching this potentially because maybe you're not getting the results that that you wanted or that you that you do want. Yeah, so having this information, having this knowledge, having all of this stuff, you're right, Casey doesn't necessarily help you pull the trigger or keep you from pulling the trigger. What's missing here, folks? The thing that's missing here is experience. The problem that most of us have is we spend more time on collecting information than we do using information. We spend more time collecting data than we do using the data and understand how that data is giving us an edge, okay? So the thing that's missing at each step is experience. And we all know Albert Einstein probably said none of these quotes, but he's always credited with these wonderful quotes and learning is experience. Everything else is just information. And man, I collected information for years, but I didn't learn anything about how to win a trade. But here's the next step that we all do, we all struggle with. We want to forget all this stuff, and we just want to go from let's collect information and then master this. So we're all collecting information, just information, and then you look at it and you go, how does that help me win a trade? I don't know. Get rid of it. Let me get some more information. Because by golly, you know, we have goals and no time to wait. No time to mess around with all of this experience stuff that we need. Right? With gaining experience. That takes too long. You know, it makes sense in every other profession. But day trading, there's a secret. And you just got to find out what the secret is, like when to push the button, because that's what we see. So do you have goals, trading goals? And the reason I ask that is because there is a difference when you think you have a goal. Now, a goal implies that action will be taken to reach that goal. It implies that one will discipline oneself until the goal has been accomplished. Okay? So as it relates to day trading, do we have goals? Or do we have hopes and dreams? 
The hopes and dreams require no more than thought. That's it. You can have hopes and dreams and do nothing but think about it. But people who achieve their hopes and dreams have set goals and in a, get this, disciplined, systematic way have worked to reach them. Okay, that's very important. There is a big difference between goals and hopes and dreams, okay? And again, I get to talk to a lot of traders, and the word goal comes up a lot. But then I ask them, what, well, do you actually have goals? Because this is the definition of a goal, and this is a hope and dream. So as they're approaching trading, they realize, you know what? I think maybe I'm, I'm only... I only have hopes and dreams. And I really don't have a foundation built from goals. Okay? Thoreau taught that the hopes and dreams are the castles we build in the air. The, they need foundations, though. And the first step in building the foundation of a dream is to set a goal. So there's nothing wrong with hopes and dreams. But you've got to start building a foundation by doing something actionable, uh, a system of working at your trading. Okay? Now, so, you still don't know whether you're approaching day trading as a hobbyist or whether you're approaching day trading the way professionals do. So, Ask yourself these questions. Do you read and write in online trading forums where anybody can say anything about anything? Do you spend a lot of time searching and watching YouTube videos? Do you attend lots of webinars? Um, have you read books on trading and trading psychology? I'm, I brought up the Mark Douglas book. Everybody's read it. Everybody thinks it's wonderful. Everybody's still struggling with their trading. Why is that? Do you go hunting for free indicators that you can, that look really cool that you can put on your chart and you can make new, uh, 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 market profile images and, and charts and all these other indicators and they just look so cool because they're extracting data and then they're creating a new picture for you. How many of you have tried creating your own trading system because the ones that you have looked at or tried from other people just wasn't quite getting it done. Really close. was really close. Not quite there. So a lot of us will spend a lot of time trying to create yet another trading system because nobody else in the world has been able to create one that actually works, right? So you're going to create your own. And then... You spend hours and hours and days and weeks and months and years backtesting. What was the net result of your backtesting? Great result until you actually trade it. You spend a lot of time looking at historical charts or what I call static charts, meaning you'll pull up a, you know, 30, 60 days worth of data and you'll just start scrolling back on those days and you're looking at static charts. Those static charts, each bar has four points of data on it. High, low, open, close. That's it. Yet you're going to try to build a trading system based on four, even though there was a lot of other data in that bar. Lots of other things coming in. 
it seems to make sense to you, though, to just look at high, low, open, close. Because that's what's in front of you. That's what's on a chart. So most of you study those static charts because you're working at your trading, right? Well, I need to work at my trading. That's what the guy in the webinar said. You got to work at your trading. It's hard work. So I'm going to study these charts. You tend to start and stop a lot if I'm describing you. Um, you know, you get very interested and then life gets in the way. And you have to take several weeks that turns into maybe a month or two or a year. And then you come back to it. And you're in and out, in and out. Okay? You jump around from system to system. Sometimes right in the middle of a trade, you'll do it. I did. I'd be in a trade that one system got me in the trade, but then the conditions changed. And I was in the trade. I'm like, oh, I should get out of this. But this other system says I should stay in. So I think I'll just stay in and, you know, let's just see what happens. Shoot, I'm in the trade. Let's just see what happens. Eventually, you realize, okay, there's something going on here with trading that I just don't get. So I need an auto trader. Something where I can remove accountability from me and put the accountability on the computer. So if I can just have some program that I just turn on and then I can go play golf or whatever and come back and I've got this all this money, then that that that's what I really need to be doing. I, I should be pursuing an auto trader. I, I do uh, occasionally a couple times a year doing a, uh, an event. In fact, I uh, have one coming up a week from today uh, at Ninja Trader. Uh, we'll send out an email for you guys. Um, and I can see the title of the events that happened before me. That's all I can see. In fact, I can't even see that anymore. That was Now they're using Zoom and I can't see that. But I used to be able to say, see the titles of the presentations that preceded the one that I was doing. And I could see how many people showed up for those presentations. That's the only information I could see. I couldn't see who the people were. Or I couldn't even see who did the presentation. I just saw the title and the number of people attended. And it was amazing. Three or four to one, the number of people that would show up for automated trading uh, webinars. Amazing. So you spend a lot of time while you're working on this trading system of yours trying to figure out how to not take losses. The winners, they seem to be happening just fine. So we want to keep those. But what indicators can I add that would keep me out of losing trades? Yeah. So, another Mark Douglas book. What was it called? Trading Without Emotion or something like that? Uh, yeah, you can't. How many of you are trying to trade without emotion? How many of you have, have struggled with emotions while you're trading? So, we spend a lot of time an effort and energy attempting to not have emotions. Trade like a machine. <laughs> Just now. <laughs> you find out that a lot of day traders don't really have a lot of time for day trading. What they want to be able to do trade for a couple of hours in the morning and then be done with that and then go about the rest of their day and then do it again the next morning. I mean, we all have lives to live, right? So if I could just do this 
relatively fun and exciting thing every morning, make just enough money where maybe I can quit my job someday, then, yeah, that's that's pretty much, again, I talk to a lot of traders. There's a lot of people. They just don't really have time other than during trading hours. Again, that guy who I called trader number one wants to make a lot of money as fast as possible. I don't have time for anything else. Then there's trader number two, fascinated by the markets. Just loves to add more and more and more stuff to his trading platform, to his workspace. Because it's fascinating. Trains like a weekend warrior, right? Speaking of weekend warriors, <laughs> I did a Spartan race last weekend, and I haven't trained for a Spartan race. I haven't done any, any of the right things. And I got the, the results that I deserved. I I can't really complain about the results I didn't get from the work I didn't do. So I just showed up and ran a race and got my butt handed to me. Yeah, Charles, I don't even trade in the afternoon. We uh we we I trade for three winning trades and then I'm done for the day. That's it. Three winners and I'm done. Net three. But we'll talk more about that. So if you've answered yes to these questions, either some or all of them, guess which path you've chosen. You're, you're really acting like a hobbyist if you feel like you fit in any any part in this list. And I I'm not saying that there's anything wrong with that. But I want you to recognize it and understand it that what you're doing is why you're not seeing the success that you maybe want to see. Okay? Or is this you? You really don't have time to do the things that hobbyists like to do. Um, you have a strict set of rules. You think of those rules as more like a job description. If I had a job I went to every day and I had a job description, it was up to me to do everything within that job description. So when I show up to trade every morning, I'm just doing my job. Afternoons, instead of trading, I practice because in an afternoon, you know, the volume is down a little bit. Liquidity is a little lower, except for certain times in the afternoons. But you can sit there for four or five hours and get, get really gain almost no experience. Remember how important experience was in all of this? Experience is what takes all that information turns it into knowledge, turns it into something actionable, and eventually makes you a professional trader, okay? So practice, when I practice in the afternoons, instead of maybe spending four or five hours to take one or two trades, I can spend one or two hours to take 20 or 30 trades and gain some experience. So I'm going to practice the way a professional athlete practices. I'll study price action on active charts. When I'm practicing, I'm using active charts, meaning there's data streaming into these charts because I want to see what the flow of orders is doing to that bar and how a bar develops. 
because that's going to tell me what to expect on the next bar. But if I only know high, low, open, close, I have a fraction of the information that's actually available. Okay? So we manage risk. Like I said, three wins and I'm out for the day. Or net three losses and I'm out for the day. Okay? I make no attempts to manage emotions. Doesn't matter. I I don't even, I mean, my emotions are not part of my trading any longer. It was. But I managed to find a way to get rid of emotions at least to a large degree. And it's a process. There is effort involved. But you can trade without emotion. If you spend time in our trade room, we have some of them here today that you'll notice when I'm in a trade, I might start talking about something else because I don't care. I mean, I'm in the trade, but there's really no point in discussing it necessarily unless there's something that needs to be pointed out. I may continue with whatever conversation I was in the middle of until the trade is over. There's no screaming. There's no stress. It's just a relaxed environment because when you have a system that has an edge, you know, over time, that edge is going to play out. And I can't, I can't uh, influence what the markets are going to do at this very second. So there's no reason for emotions. Okay? I have a much higher faith in what I've experienced since 2008 than what I know, okay? I have a daily routine. I have, uh, like I said, I have a, uh, I, I have a uh, job description. And my job description established, tells me what I'm supposed to do every day. I always have losing trades. I had them today. I'll have some tomorrow, probably. It's part of trading. You can't let that get to you. My focus is never on money. You will rarely hear me talk about money. Money is a net result of doing your job. If you do your job, and you do it the way it's written in your job description, you don't have to worry about money. Your concern is consistency. The markets are just a means to an end. Um, there was a time where I found day trading fascinating. Now it's just what I do in the morning to pay the bills and I'd honestly rather be doing something else, but this is what I do. But I do train the way a professional athlete trains. Now, I mentioned this in the trade room this morning. I had a conversation with a guy. He said, yeah, I don't really like to practice. Uh, it's not real, so I can't really get into it. So I'm like, well, how do you think professional athletes go about that? You think? Uh, uh, they just show up for the games? Or do you think they train? Do they, do they practice? Are they constantly working on their skills? Somebody brought up Kobe Bryant getting up at, and, and being on the court practicing at 5.30 in the morning every day. Well, does Kobe Bryant need to practice? Did he? Yeah. He did. That's why he was Kobe Bryant. So if you see yourself in this list, then congratulations, you've chosen the path of being a trader. Now, like I said, perhaps you saw yourself on the list on the left. 
and you've identified that you're a hobbyist and you're okay with that. There's nothing wrong with hobbies. Gaming is a huge industry. They have professional gaming, <laughs> which it wasn't that long ago I became aware of. Amazing. Professional gaming. So if you're okay with that, that's great. Be a hobbyist and enjoy it. Embrace it. Understand it. But adjust your expectations of ever having it be something that can generate a regular and consistent income. Most hobbies do not generate an income. They're hobbies because there's something enjoyable that people like to do. So you have to ask yourself some hard questions. Do I really want, and cost money, do I really want to pursue this day trading things professionally or am I just enjoying it as a hobby? But maybe you've identified yourself as a hobbyist, but you really don't want to be a hobbyist. You're going to have to create some new habits. You're going to have to commit to doing the hard work daily, doing, you know, practice, studying, and doing analysis of your trades, and it's every day. You've got to become accountable for all of your trading decisions. You can't just jump in and trade, well, I thought because, you know, looked to me like the conditions were maybe... You know, you have to assume that at the end of a trading day, you have to stand in front of a boss and explain to them why you did what you did and show them that, see, this is within my job description that I was supposed to do this. And if you can't do that, then you're not accountable and you shouldn't be trading. Work at becoming experienced because when you become experienced, you become conditioned. When you become conditioned, you become consistent. Relentlessly pursue to better your execution. That's where people struggle. And that's what practice does for you. When you have a trading system that has an edge, a demonstrable edge that is proven over the years, which we have and we prove it and we do it every day in the trade room. And a lot of, we have our own traders here, some of them, um, and been coming to our trade room for years and years. We've proven it. Now, you got to still got to execute. Execution is the key the, the flip side of having an edge, such a strong edge, is you can't be sloppy with it. You've got to execute. Well, the nice thing about execution, it can be practiced. you got to create and follow rock-solid rules. You've got to define your personal risk tolerance. Okay? And more than anything, Oh, set achievable goals, and more than anything, narrow your focus and become a specialist at that one thing, right? That, that one thing that you do. Don't try to do everything all the time. You don't have to know everything there is to know about day trading. You don't have to know about all the indicators, all the styles of trading. You don't have to know any of that. You take a little, little tidbit, a little morsel where you have an edge, and you work at, the, at exploiting that edge as often as you can, as professionally as you can, and you try to become the best in the world at exploiting that edge. Now, talk a lot about practice. So right now, 
I'm telling you all to go out there and practice. But if you don't believe that you've got a trading system that has been tested and proven to have an edge, particularly for 14 years like ours, then why would you practice? So a lot of us don't have a, a, an edge, and yet we still keep trading with real money, and, and the losses just keep piling up. So it's it's surprising. I did it. But in hindsight, I did it. I just kept thinking, man, this is like roulette. If I just put everything on black, I might win and get a lot of my money back. So I've been talking about the, our trading system. If the, those of you that aren't familiar with it, Simple yes or no trade entry decisions. That's it. It either qualifies or it doesn't. So no gray areas, no vagaries. If condition one exists, we go to condition two, and we look for condition two. If condition one doesn't exist, there's no trade. There's nothing. Even if condition two shows up, if we don't have condition one, there's no trade. So we just continue down the line. If we get a yes, we continue watching for the setup. Keep watching, keep watching, trade it. All right, so this Saturday, we're going to uh, go over this trading system. It's simple. Very simple. And it's, uh, it's something that you can practice dozens of times a day in market replay. That's how you get good. So this is basically what we're looking for, right? This is what we sit and we wait. And these are conditions that exist right here. And we're looking for a, notice that last bar. It's a big move. And it doesn't have to be huge. It just has to be bigger than what's been going on, okay? So here's the important part. But why is this so important? Is that an opportunity for us? Nope. It's an opportunity, but it's an opportunity for other traders, not for us. We wait for those other traders to do what they're going to do, and they're going to do one of two things. When price moves that far that fast, they're going to do one or two of two things. They're going to either... Hit the panic button and bail out. Or they're going to start taking profits. Now, we know this is going to happen. So when that happens, what happens to price? Price drops. Okay, so what we're doing is we're watching a crowd of people. I like to think of what we do as people watching rather than day trading. When I think of it that way, I can kind of get a better handle on it. If you think about the vastness of the markets and the the number of dollars and contracts and and stocks and all the stuff that's going on, I mean it's again, it's fascinating. And it's a giant monster. Um and there's a lot of influences. And and when I think of it that way, it's it's almost like trying to think about where the universe ends. You know, it's just so beyond my comprehension that I can't really get my brain around it. So I like to think of it really as just people because that's really what makes the markets move is just people. So we have this group of people and this group of people experience a sudden and unexpected event. So whenever a sudden and unexpected event happens, usually you can anticipate what's going to happen right after that. So this is an example. I love this example. 
So we have people reacting to a sudden and unexpected dramatic event, don't we? And I, is this pre-recorded? Yes, John, I pre-recorded this. <laughs> Does that answer your question? <laughs> so even though I haven't, oops, even though I haven't seen a video of this event right here, I know exactly what happens after this. Because historically, I've seen things like this happen, and I know how people act and react. So if, yeah, well, except the bats fly. So the fact that I know something about this event gives me an edge, right, if I was a betting man. So what's going to happen? What's going to happen here? Right after the danger has passed, what's the first thing that's going to happen? Everybody's hands are going to go down. Hey, if I know that, I have an edge. Their hands are going to go down. And then they're going to look around to see if anybody else is hurt, if anybody got hurt that maybe needs help. And then they're going to feel relief and they're going to all kind of start laughing. Right? Am I am I right or not? And then this guy that brought his popcorn from home is going to start eating his popcorn. I thought that was hilarious. This guy brought popcorn from home. He's got it in a plastic bag. So that's an edge I have because I know when this sudden and unexpected event happens, something predictable is going to happen. So that's what we do. Right? I forgot to pull up a file here. Hold on. I'll get it for you here real quick. I'll show you what it looks like. So here's some trades from, it could be this week, could be last week, could be last month, could be last year, could be five years ago. You know what? It doesn't matter because they're always the same. We do the same thing every single day. And it, Rarely, if ever, changes. We have people that leave trading. They have to leave for a while, and then they come back. Nothing's changed. Why would I change it? Have you guys been to trade rooms where it seems like every couple of weeks something has changed? They've added something. They've they've introduced this big this secret the secret trade that they've been holding for all these years, and now they're introducing the secret. And then two weeks later, that secret is no longer a thing, and they have to introduce something else. That was my experience. Yep, that was my experience when I was a struggling trader. When we take trades... We take the same trades. This could have been five years ago. It could have been yesterday. Doesn't matter. So here's what we're looking for. Remember what I told you. Now, we have some smaller bars. Price is just kind of in a channel here. No real strong moves. And then suddenly, bam, price moves hard. Now, see all of this stuff that's on this bar. These are indicators that we're going to talk about on Saturday. I could go into detail in each of them, but we've been at this long enough. Um, I'm just going to show you that there is a tremendous amount of information in these very simple-looking indicators. This is very compli 
complex system in order to make it simple for the trader. But in short, our trade entry was either at the open of this bar or down here where we actually got a better than open of the bar, okay? And with all that confluence, there's the trade. You put on a buy, and there's the win. Same thing. Now, this is something you're going to see over and over and over again. We have a confluence of events. This was the big bar. We still had a little bit of steam left in it. We've got more indicators suggesting a potential trade. I shorted it right here. I think I might have even... Yeah, it took a little bit of, of heat, hit that resistance, bounced right off of it, ended up being a winner, okay? And I didn't cherry pick these. I just went looking. In fact, I've got some losers on here too. I just grabbed a few trades. Um, but again, here's this hard push, a confluence of events. This bar opens with what we call our rock star indicator. And off it goes. Now, you see these, these are dynamic charts. When, I'm, when I study trading, this is what I do. I, I watch price action inside of a bar. These bars mean nothing to me. High, low, open, close. That's it. That's all the information I have. But watching price inside of a bar well, that's a whole lot more information. If I can just show you over and over and over, it's the same trade over and over and over. You just have to qualify the setup. Okay? Look at the size of that bar. But there's no trade here because we didn't have a trigger. Yeah, I'm not. Yeah, sometimes I, uh, I, I'm, I don't, uh, I say something uh, backwards. But there's no trade here. Because even though we had a lot of confluence suggesting price is going to pull back, we needed one more thing right here, a trigger to get into the trade. Doesn't mean it won't pull back. It just means that we didn't have a trigger to get into the trade. So there's another one, no trade. So this time, we had the trigger to get into the trade, but we didn't have the confluence on this bar that we needed. Okay? So there was no trade taken here. All right? We're going to go over a lot more of this on Saturday. So hopefully, you guys are going to uh, – be able to join us on Saturday or at the very least register for it so that you'll get a video of it. So that's a simple trading system. We trade pullbacks from a breakout. We're looking for and measuring strength so that we can anticipate weakness. Right? Strength so that we can anticipate weakness. We want to know when the market's likely being manipulated, so we have indicators for that. We have a short exposure time. We're in trades generally less than a minute. We limit our losses. We won't stay and trade all day. In fact, I only trade until noon, from 9 a.m. till noon. That's it. That's the most liquid time of the day. That's when our edge is the strongest, meaning we'll have more opportunities. Not that it's going to higher probability of winning or, or losing later in the day. Um, it's just uh, fewer opportunities. So we're going to limit our losses. And we're going to focus on maximizing execution and trade management. So I never, ever 
lengthen my stop. If I put on a trade, I put on a bracket order. Five tick target, seven tick stop. But we manage the stop relative to the current conditions. For example, this morning, I put on a trade. It had seven tick stop, but the conditions changed. So I shortened my stop, and I got out with a minus two ticks instead of minus seven. So it's a very, again, it's a, it's a linear approach. Ready, aim, fire. A lot of us are doing it the exact backwards way. Or we're going, ready, fire, aim. Fire, ready, aim. Yeah, I'll answer a question. I'm almost done here. And we use one-minute charts. Um, we trade just futures, but we have a lot of Forex traders that like to use our, our stuff. So you go, only five ticks. Well, I don't see it. How do you make any money at five ticks? Well, again... We're looking for consistency. It's a lot easier to understand that once you become consistent trading a single lot, and, you know, now these are based on the E-minis, which I trade. For those of you getting started, you could trade the micros for even for less money, build up your skills, then shift over into the minis. Then start adding contracts and keep doing the same thing over and over and over again. Don't try to keep adding more stuff. Just focus on what we're doing. Focus on what you know. Focus on what you practice. And just do that every day. So you can see once you've worked your way up, I mean, each trade, if, if I traded five lots, I'm looking at, you know, a couple hundred bucks. And I do three winners a day. Am I going to get rich? Maybe over time. Not in a hurry. But I am going to be able to change my life and live a different kind of life than the one I was living before. So just do the work. Simple. Right? I said this is a simple trade. That does not mean easy. There's work to do. You've got to do the work. So we have things to help you with that. We have our fast forward trading program. We have our trade room. We have training videos. We record our trade room every single day and we make that available. Um, we have a mentoring program. We have support, live support, support desk. Um, we're, we've cut down on the weekly group mentoring, but I do. I now do most of that mentoring in the trade room. So we have a, uh, YouTube channel where we uh, post our trade of the day videos. So if you just go to YouTube and put in the intentional trader, go to the trade of the day videos. And again, what I just showed you that those videos I just showed you, it's more of the same. It's, it's like watching the same trades over and over again. We have almost 200 of them and they're not 200 different trades. It's like the same thing over and over and over again. All right. So I know some of you are here uh, and you came for the special because I get uh, when I, whenever I send out an email, I always have people say, do you have a special coming up? And so here's the special. So uh, you can use that coupon code at checkout on any of our programs. Okay. All right. Yes, David, I have uh, some time to answer questions. So let me answer that with a story. My wife and I went to Las Vegas back in the early 90s. 
and it was our first time there. And we sat down, and we're playing blackjack, and the blackjack dealer told us about this guy, this guy that came in every day. And he had been doing it for years. And he would come in, sit down at the blackjack table, and he would play blackjack until he won $200. Right at $200, he got up and left. And because he was that disciplined, of course, this is the early 90s, that was his livelihood. That was what he needed. So he was focused on consistently winning a certain amount and not staying so long that once the conditions had changed, it was too late. He'd already given it all back. So on more days than not, he would win $200 and go home. So at the time, that didn't seem to really resonate with me, but I must have remembered it because when I was working on all of this and I started thinking, I just want to end the day as a winner. So that's, you know, it, it got to be where I was so used to losing. I started thinking, what if I just proved to myself that I can be a winner? I didn't even know if I could be a winner. After seven years, I didn't even know if it was possible. So I did this experiment, and the experiment was the two-tick challenge, which you can find on our YouTube channel. The two tick challenge. I challenged myself to try to win just two ticks a day, stop trading live, and trade the rest of the day in sim so that no matter what happened, I ended the day as a winner. No matter what. Wasn't much, but it's a winner. So what's your point in that? Why would you trade more instead of increasing the lot size on your trades when you're trading during the best time? Why would you want to go more and more and more? Why not prove to yourself that you can be a winning trader? Prove to yourself that you can master a trading system and that you can sit down and with a high degree of probability expect to win most of your trades. Why wouldn't you, instead of just trading all day for one or two lots, why wouldn't you trade for four or five lots, six lots, seven lots, and trade for three trades, put that money in the bank. Nobody, this is a, I didn't come up with this, but somebody said, nobody ever went broke putting money in the bank. What's the worst feeling in the world in trading? What's the worst feeling in trading? Answer me that. I can feel it. I know it because I can still feel it to this day. Giving money back. Being ahead. Being way ahead. Feeling great. And by the end of the day, it's not only all gone, but then even more is gone, and you've lost money. You were ahead. And then you ended up as a losing trader that day. Is there any worse feeling? I mean, you just go, oh, man, if I had just stopped, I would, I would be ahead. Maybe not by as much, but I'd still be ahead. So I noticed something that if I ended a day as a winner, it changed my entire day. 
I went through the rest of the day feeling great. And you know what a winner is? Anybody that doesn't lose money. If I won $5, I ended that day as a winner. So what you want to do, see if you can string 10 of those together. Prove to yourself that you can be a winning trader. Quit trading for money. Money is the enemy. Money is bad. Money makes good people do bad things. Instead of trading for money, just do your job. <laughs> yeah, well, I don't look at it at all, ever. I don't need to. I did my job. I have an edge. If I execute, if I do my job, the edge will take care of itself. I don't need to look at a PLO. Never. In fact, my daily PLO goes to a, a, I have a, a folder, and I use Outlook, so I created a folder. It automatically goes right into that what folder. I don't even look at it. You should count winners and losers so that you know when to quit. That's all I do. When I when I hit my net three winners or net three losers, I quit trading live. I switch to sim, and I finish the trading session in sim. Because my job, my job description says, I'm sitting in this chair trading from 9 a.m. until noon, whether that's trading live or whether that's trading sim. Doesn't matter. My job, 9 a.m. to noon, this is where I am. This is what I do. How's that working out? I mean, are you are you happy with your trading, David? Are you are you full-time professional? Are you able to generate a consistent and regular income? Excellent. Congratulations. You're one of the very few. Outstanding. Most of us, though, are, are struggling a bit more. And this approach helps those people who have been struggling. You've got to back up a little bit. Teach yourself that you can be a winning trader. Most of you have never proven it to yourself. So I quit trying to make money, and instead I just wanted to, can I even be a winning trader? I had no idea. So that's why I came up with the two-tick challenge. I wanted to find out if it was even possible for me to consistently end the day as a winning trader. And if I could answer yes, it's possible to consistently do that because I've proven it, well, now I have a foundation to build a trading career on. Right? I know I can be a winning trader. So now I'll start building on that. Yeah, that, that one is, is, is by far the most popular video that I've done. In fact, we, we're going to do that event uh, again in about a month, I think. I haven't done it in a while. Yeah, I, I, I got lucky and had the opportunity to do some of this that a lot of people haven't had the opportunity. So, um, you know... You kind of have to hit rock bottom sometimes to have your epiphanies, and that's where I was at. Um, if you want to know more about that, uh, on our website, if you go up to the top, you'll see blog. There's like a four-part article um, that I wrote up about my, my path, my career uh, prior to becoming a professional trader and kind of how I got here. So uh, you can you can learn more about me uh, in the blog. All right, 
I hope you guys all come on Saturday. Come hang out with us if you have time. We'll teach you a simple trade and all the indicators. We're going to talk about all the indicators. Excellent. Very glad you guys came today. Glad you enjoyed it. And we will see you all on Saturday.